All right. So in the last couple of videos, we talked about how you can configure a client within Keycloak. And a client is basically how your application uses Keycloak for its authentication information, uses Keycloak as its its source of truth, as its, as its single sign-up provider. Now, what if all of your users, you don't want to con uh, configure them directly in Keycloak. You already have them in Google or Azure AD, sorry, Entra ID or somewhere else, right? You don't want to have to duplicate uh, these user databases in two different places. Well, that's what identity providers uh, are for. So basically, uh, Keycloak can sit in the middle between your user database and your applications and kind of shuffle things across when, when it needs to. Um, this is useful if you, um, well, we use it because we want to be able to set up uh, our applications to talk to Keycloak. And then there might be a couple different ways that people can log into the applications. They might uh, log in using Google authentication, right? Our, our my startup's um, email domain is in Google. So we might use effectively a login with Google for our particular uh, domain, or we might might want our clients to log in maybe with uh, hard-coded users or, you know, custom-created users directly in the Keycloak uh, database. Obviously, we don't want to give them a user in our, our Google uh, tenant. So, Identity, identity providers are very useful for that. Of course, you can go directly the hard route and do uh, Keycloak OpenID Connect, which I think basically uses um, another realm as the identity provider for this realm. So like uh, if everyone who has access to the master realm should automatically have access to the demo realm, I could set up, uh, I could basically configure all of this information to point to the appropriate places on the master realm. And then it would basically pass through um, authentication information. And you could also use any OAuth2 provider and enter the custom information there. Similarly with OpenID Connect or SAML 2.0. But if you're using a known service, a, you know, a well-established service, and I'll actually turn my, turn my face off here. Um, you can just pick one of these. So let's say GitHub, right? We want to allow anyone from GitHub uh, to log into this demo realm. So here we uh, specify basically anything that's blank, we have to provide, especially the client ID and the client secret. And we'll get that from GitHub. We'll have to create a client in GitHub, um, similarly to how we created a client in Keycloak. Uh, and this basically, uh, when we when we create that client in GitHub, GitHub will give us a client ID and a client secret. That client ID and client secret allows Keycloak to hand off the right information to to GitHub to say, "Hey, log in this user." GitHub does its thing and sends back some information, and then Keycloak is able to exchange the authorization code for a user token or an access token. Uh, and then probably uh, perform authentication and hand its own auth authorization code to the application that the user is trying to log into. And then the application does its its dance and, and uh, exchanges that app, uh, authorization code for an access token. Um, and everybody's happy. So this can get super complicated super quickly. Uh, but obviously these two are the most important aspects. Those, are, those two are required. Depending on the application, those two might also be required. Uh, this I believe is just for, yeah, defining the order of the providers in the GUI. So basically when you land on the Keycloak uh, login screen, you can specify the order in which identity providers show up. So like GitHub should be first and then Google should be second and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and then display name. So let's say if I, I wanted the, the button essentially to say your GitHub account as opposed to 
GitHub. Um, we can do that. I don't have a client ID and client secret for GitHub uh, right now, so I can't actually click add. So I'll just go cancel and go back. Let's look at a couple others. So let's look at Facebook. So similar sort of pattern, client ID, client secret, we get display order. But Facebook, we have this additional field, additional users profile fields. So because Facebook deals with a lot of you know personal data, right? You have to specifically tell Facebook what data uh, you want. Um, in, I want to say all, but certainly most of these kind of upstream identity providers, you do get an authorization screen, an app authorization screen as, as a user. So if you go to log in with Facebook, Facebook presents you a screen that says such and such application, uh, is requesting access to see your, uh, username and email address and relationship status. Does Facebook even still do that anymore? You know, those sorts of things, right? And depending on whether or not you're okay with that level of sensitive or not so sensitive data being given over to, in this case, Keycloak, you say, yes, authorized, or nope, nope, I don't want to use this app. They're asking for way too much, right? Google has a similar sort of thing. Uh, Google calls it scopes. Um, and depending on what you ask for, uh, there are actually various degrees of verification that your application has to, has to go through in order to be listed or in order to be able to use the Google uh, upstream. Within a particular tenant, like for internal applications, so you know my company's uh, internal applications to be able to use my company's Google tenant information, um, th there's a lower bar. We can pretty much do whatever we want there. Um, but if you're going to let just anyone log in using Google, you have to go through very specific uh, checks and, and you know there are some hoops you have to jump through in order to do that. And again, we have a bunch of different identity providers here. Um, Bitbucket, Facebook, GitHub, GitLab, Google, LinkedIn, so on and so forth. Microsoft, because you know Microsoft is its own can of worms. Um, yeah, so Microsoft has a, this tenant ID thing, which is kind of unique to it. Um, typically, it will be clear from the documentation from each of these identity providers what you have to provide to Keycloak in order to use it as, as the identity provider. Um, so in Microsoft's case, I, I'm pretty sure that tenant ID is actually required. It is, it's not required by Keycloak for in general for an identity provider, but if you don't provide it for a Microsoft, uh, and a uh, tenant, um, it, it won't work. It just, it just won't work. So with that, that's kind of everything revolving around identity providers, um, Obviously, I didn't go too deep on any one of them, but if you have questions about that, go ahead and leave a comment down below uh, in the in the comment section, and I'll do what I can to answer them. Uh, I have actually yet to use identity providers uh, down in the social area. Uh, I've used Keycloak Open ID Connect and SAML 2.0, possibly one of these other two um, as well. Um, but I, I haven't had a chance to do any of the, you know, login with Google or, or whatever. Um, actually that's not true. I think I did use login with Google on, on one tenant. Um, so I'll try to find the answers if I don't, if I don't know them. Uh, but yes, this can, this can definitely get very complicated very quickly. Uh, and, I will say authentication is notoriously hard to debug and troubleshoot. So I wish you the best of luck if you run into a, a weird situation. But if you need help, you know, there's a community around it. I'm more than happy to help. Someone else in the comments, I'm sure, is more than happy to help. Um, and Keycloak has a, a thriving community. There's community forums and, and a whole bunch of other places that you can get, get help. So with that, I think this might be our last video for the course. I don't know. You'll have to check the playlist to see if there's another video coming up. Um, but this might be it.